and death or injury to the aircraft occupants and others. This video provides information on the removal and installation of cylinders on Teledyne Continental Motors engines. This video will make many references to specified values. Whenever this statement is made, it refers you to Teledyne Continental Motors engine overhaul or maintenance manuals and Teledyne Continental Motors service bulletins applicable to the engine you are working on. The technician must always consult the appropriate maintenance manual, overhaul manual, parts manual, and service bulletins for specific instructions prior to performing any maintenance events, including cylinder removal or installation. Maintenance or preventive maintenance events performed on engines that have been modified from their original type certificated configuration must be performed in accordance with the specific instructions provided by the supplemental type certificate holder. Consult the appropriate maintenance manual, overhaul manual, parts manual, and service bulletins for specific instructions while performing maintenance, preventive maintenance, engine, or engine component overhaul. These documents provide the technical information and dimensional fits and limits criteria necessary to ensure compliance with the manufacturer's instructions for continued airworthiness. Special tools required to perform cylinder removal, inspection, and installation can be found in the maintenance and overhaul manuals applicable to the engine being serviced. The ready reference guide included with this video provides a listing of these specialized tools. The procedures for removal of engine cowling, baffles, ignition leads, spark plugs, magnetos, induction and exhaust systems, including temperature probes, are not detailed in this video. Refer to the aircraft manufacturer's maintenance manual and Teledyne Continental Motors overhaul or maintenance manuals for specific instructions and procedures. Now that we have gained access to the engine and cylinders, we may begin our removal procedure by first removing the fuel injector nozzle line or primer line as installed. Remove the fuel injector nozzle or primer nozzle as installed. Remove the induction port fuel drain tube if installed. Remove the rocker cover and gasket. Discard the gasket. Rotate the crankshaft to position the piston at top center with both intake and exhaust valves closed. Remove the rocker shaft retaining bolts. Next, remove the rocker shafts, rocker arms, and thrust washers. Identify the position from which these items were removed. Remove the push rods and identify them with the cylinder number and intake or exhaust position. To remove the push rod housings, Carefully push the pushrod housing against the spring until the cylinder flange end is clear of its recess in the cylinder head. Lower the cylinder end of the pushrod housing out from the cylinder head and withdraw it from the crankcase. Remove the pushrod housing springs, washers, O-rings, and packing. Discard the O-ring and packing. Remove the torque putty from cylinder base nuts, through bolt nuts, and, if installed, seven stud nuts. Remove the seven stud nut and bracket if installed. Remove the through bolt nuts from both sides of the engine. Remove the three lower cylinder base nuts, then the upper three cylinder base nuts last. Carefully remove the cylinder by using a gentle rocking action to work the cylinder flange off the cylinder deck studs and through bolts, taking care not to damage the stud and through bolt threads. Support the piston and connecting rod to prevent damage as you remove the cylinder away from the crankcase. Place the removed cylinder on a clean work surface. Next, remove the piston from the connecting rod by removing the piston pin. It may be necessary to use a non-metallic drift and a hammer to gently drive the piston pin out of the piston and connecting rod. Remove the cylinder base O-ring and loop it around the cylinder base studs to support the connecting rod. Remove any additional cylinders if necessary following the procedures outlined above. 
With the cylinder removed, visually inspect the following crankcase and internal engine component areas. Inspect all cylinder deck studs, through bolts, and seven studs for damage to the threads. Ensure the studs are secure in the crankcase. Inspect the crankcase cylinder deck area for evidence of mechanical damage or cracks. Remove and inspect each hydraulic tappet for spalling and mechanical damage. Visually inspect the camshaft lobes for abnormal wear and spalling. Bleed each lifter. Coat with 50 weight aviation oil and reinstall in its original location. Correct any discrepancies prior to proceeding. Prior to performing any inspection, clean the cylinder and cylinder and valve train components in accordance with the applicable engine overhaul or maintenance manual. Notice. Verify all part numbers are correct prior to assembly and installation on the engine. Perform a dimensional, visual, and non-destructive inspection of the cylinder and cylinder and valve train components, including compliance with the latest revision of TCM Service Bulletin SB 96-12. The latest revision of TCM Service Bulletin SID 97-4 provides dimensional fits and limits for cylinders, pistons, and piston rings. Record all dimensions and inspection results. Verify piston to cylinder clearance is in accordance with the specified value. Be sure to measure the bore diameter in the thrust area and at right angles to the thrust area to ensure that the cylinder bore meets the specified dimensional limits. After verifying the cylinder bore, measure the piston ring end gaps by inserting each ring individually into the cylinder. Measure ring gap as detailed in the latest revision of Service Bulletin SID 97-4. Verify that all dimensions are within the limits specified. The cylinder must be thoroughly cleaned prior to assembly and installation on the engine. Clean the cylinder bore thoroughly using a solution of mild liquid dishwashing detergent, warm water, and a stiff bristle brush. Rinse the cylinder using warm water, completely dry, and coat the cylinder bore with clean 50-weight aviation oil.